Hi, I'm James Muir and this is a screencast for Make More Noise. What we're going to have a look at today is automating delays in Logic. As you can see from our arrange page, we've got a fairly simple setup here, drum beat and some acoustic slide guitar, which sounds like this. <laughs> Okay, so it's just that round twice, and what I'm going to do is put some delay on the guitar. Um, I'm going to use Logic's Tape Delay, because that's one of my personal favourites. And we'll insert that on the track, and as you can see with the delay, you've got uh, all the tempo uh, controls here, so the different subdivisions, it'll be synced to the track automatically. And then over on this right hand side, you've got your control of the dry and wet mix. Uh, so just in its default settings, it would sound like this. which is fine, you can then set it up from there and control it. But what I actually want to talk about is doing things slightly differently. So we're going to move this tape delay off the channel strip and stick it on a bus or an aux, as it's now called in Logic 8. And then we're going to automate it. And this is going to enable us to do the trick where you only hear the delay at the end of the line rather than running all the way through the part like you just heard it in my first example. So the first thing to do is open up the mixer window. And as you can see, uh, the way that 8, uh, controls these things. We don't actually have any auxes or buses set up at the moment, so we need to go to the send on the guitar track and create a bus. Once we've done that, we get our aux pop up here, and then we can insert our delay, which we'll do exactly the same as we did before tape delay stereo and stick that on the bus. Let me just move that out of the way a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. And then this send here will control the amount of delay that we're actually hearing. So with it set uh, to its default setting, it's actually not going to have any delay on it at all. And as we turn it up, we'll hear more delay. This is quite a good trick even if you're not going to automate it because what it enables you to do is use the same delay uh, on multiple different tracks because you can just have them all set up with an aux sending to a bus uh, and then you just use this uh, send level here to dial in the amount of delay you're actually looking for on each track so you can have some of them quite wet with lots of delay or some of them quite dry with just a fairly subtle delay to keep them sort of bouncing in time with the track. Let me just shut the mixer down and uh, I'm going to shut down the tape delay window for a moment and we'll go over to the automation view which we can do by clicking on the uh, automation button here at the top of the screen and then from the automation menu here which you can see is denoted by this box here that says volume in it we're going to pick up the send one which as you can see is right down the bottom and has uh, no level assigned to it at the moment at all so I'm just going to zoom the screen a little bit so we can see a bit more clearly what we're doing and then I'm just going to click on this blank automation and create a node and then click to create a second node and then I can turn that up but because I'm doing this overlay to the waveform you can actually see immediately that the delay is just going to come in on this one note here at the end of the beat and then if I just click to create a couple more nodes I can turn it down again so it's out of the way by the time that the groove kicks back in <laughs> Now if we go back to the tape delay window and we can change the setting in here and you can hear immediately that you can start creating different kinds of grooves or using the delay to fill the gaps or another common use for this effect is on vocals to just emphasize the la uh, emphasize the last word of a line. <laughs> Okay, that's fine. Now, the other thing that obviously sort of jumps out there is that we've probably turned the level up a little bit high on the send to get the, uh, so the delay's drowning out the backing track a little bit. Let's just knock that down. And then the other really useful thing about Logic's tape delay is you've got this EQ section here with a low cut and a high cut. And what you can do is you can use this to actually narrow down the bandwidth of the delay returns. So you can actually make the delay sound smaller uh, more telephony so that it fits in better with the track. So I'm just going to roll off the extreme bottom end and the extreme top end and we'll have another listen with the level a little bit lower and with this EQ. <laughs> And that 
actually could probably stand to have a little bit more low cut on it as well. So we'll take that low cut up to sort of 500 hertz and have another listen. <laughs> Okay, I'm just going to go through now and very quickly stick in the rest of the automation. So we've got that on each of those little end sections of the riff. I'm actually just doing this very quickly and quite messily. So take this with a pinch of salt and obviously when you do it yourself, spend a little bit more time. Make sure you get them spot on the beat or whatever's appropriate for the kind of music you're doing. And the last one. And again, we'll just match that level up so it's at minus six. Uh, but this time we won't have it turning down at the end so that when the beat stops and the riff stops, you should hear the delay play out as a fade. And that's how you do the classic delay on one specific part of the audio trick in Logic Pro. Thanks for watching. I've been James Muir and this has been a screencast for Make More Noise.